Hi, this is Sander de Recht for ActionVFX.com and today I'm going to walk you through the creation of this visual effects shot. One of the cool things about ActionVFX is that with their collections you can add so much more realism to a shot. But instead of realism, sometimes it's just more fun to add some surrealism to a shot. So we can create some weird things, remarkable things. One might even say, stranger things. I thought it would be fun to use the Action VFX new collection of floating particles to emulate the look of the upside down. Now one of the most noticeable things about the upside down are the floating particles. In the show they are a dead giveaway that some nasty stuff is going to go down. So I am going to walk you through how I went from this shot to this shot. I have used Fusion Studio version 16 for this. It is still in beta, but it has been quite stable for me during the making of the shot. So let's get to work. This is the shot that I started out with, a young woman walking through a slightly ominous forest, looking around. Well the first thing I did was add a small color gain and adjusted the values to create a slightly more bluish nighttime look for the shot. All in all I felt it was still a bit too light, so I added another color corrector and uh, used the level control to make the shot a little more darker, a little more nighttime like. So with this basic grade done, I turned my attention to the particles. I felt that it was necessary to create three layers of depth or size of particles to uh, fill the frame as completely as possible. So I started with the white uh, particles, very small, very tiny. And I used the normal air particles like this, which are a little bit bigger. And I used another one of those with little small details like that. Just moving around looking very nice. All by itself these are quite normal looking particles, but normal isn't the look we're after here. So what I did is for example if you take a look at this particle over here, I created a fast noise tool with lots of detail and used that to drive a displacement tool. And the cool thing about the displacement tool is that it makes the look of the particles slightly more rough around the edges. Um, like here and like here. If I turn off the displacement you see that everything turns nice and round, which is not what we're looking for. So I did that on all the three particle systems with slightly different fast noises. So they all get a slightly different look and feel. When you add them all together your frame is filled with nice looking particles that move slightly different and look slightly different than they originally did. So it was time for the next step, which was to match the motion of the particles to the motion of the footage. Since it's almost a tripod shot I felt I could get away with a basic 2D track. So I use a planar tracker to track the motion of the shot, like that. And then I use the planar transform over here to let it drive the motion of the floating particles. Now it was time to match up the color to the background. I used color curves for that to make it slightly more blue. I used another color correct tool to lower the maximum level so it would all have more of the nighttime look. And then I used a bitmap tool driven by the original footage to create a mask of the light parts and the dark parts of the shot and I used that to drive a brightness contrast tool so that wherever the footage was darker the particles would be darker as well to simulate the backlit effect of the slightly lighter uh, sky. After I did all that I had a pretty nice looking end result of the woman walking through our little upside down world. One thing I didn't like as much was that I lost track of the woman in the frame. So what I did, I used a chroma keyer to extract her jacket and then I pretty subtly merged her red jacket on top of the color corrected footage. So I did three other things to make it 
even more uh, sinister, more dark, more spooky. And that is I created a background gradient and merged that using the same planar transform on top of the sky. So the sky turned from this to this. I felt I couldn't do a proper tribute to this series if I didn't have a monster. So I used a polygon shape to carve out a dark background like so. And then I used the planar transform I used before to match move the background and the monster over the plate. So we go from here to here. It's darker. There's a monster. It's very, very cool. So now I felt only one more thing was missing. And that was a slight mist in the foreground. Fortunately, Action VFX has lots of mist or fog or whatever you want to call it. I made it a little brighter. I made it a little bluer. I used the planar transform I used before. And then everything matched together. So if you... This is without. And this is with the nice foggy look. And that's it. We started out with this shot. Then we graded it. Created a nice amount of floating particles that we match moved and color graded as well. Put that on top of each other. Added a small mist in the foreground and some creepy, creepy looking creature in the background. So, when you're done binge watching your favorite 80s nostalgia show, why not grab your own camera and some footage from Action VFX and start making your own stuff? It's fun. This was Sanderrecht for ActionVFX.com.